The holidays are upon us and you know what that means. It's time to deal with your crazy family again. I know, you've survived Thanksgiving and you're staring down the barrel of the shotgun that's called Christmas dinner. Well, we have some tips today to help you navigate some of the holiday stress so that you don't carry that home, get into an argument with your spouse, and then you just spend all that time in silence on the way home and you're ready to strangle each other and you're trying not to say anything because you don't want to make the kids scream and cry and holler. We've got some help for that so that you can get through this holiday without throwing hands. It's all coming up right now on Love Lessons. Real life. Real talk. Real relationships. Faith-based tips, tricks, and challenges to improve your marriage and change your life. It's the Love Lessons Podcast with your hosts, Christian counselors and marriage experts, Dr. Zach and Blair Gammon. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode of Love Lessons. For all of you who are listening, we are back in the studio. Praise the Lord. We are no longer at home. Um, we will be in the future. We know that that's just how it will be, but yeah. we're we're in studio today. It's nice. Mm-hmm. It's nice to have the lights and the monitors and all the things that make this easy. Lights, camera, action. Right. We don't have to tear the entire <laughs> kitchen apart to make this thing work. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. You sometimes know. Sometimes things don't work out. Yeah. Sometimes they don't, and sometimes yeah. they do. So, do you have an experience this week about how mm. some things don't work out the way you planned? You had to go there. Did have to go there. Did have to go there. You did. It has, did. had to have to. Yeah, that sounds, that's it right. Works, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes things don't work out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you mess up. Sometimes <laughs> you mess up. So um, sometimes those mess ups um, happen in public where people can see it. Mm-hmm. And I had that experience. God likes to humble me sometimes when I start feeling a little too good about myself. Yeah. Okay, so God so, starts rearing up. Let me let me let me set the stage. Okay. Okay. So this weekend, um, this past weekend, as of this recording date, we and by we I mean you um, managed a huge outreach event for a church, Matthew's Table in Owensboro, Kentucky. If you're around, come visit us. And um, we prepared some meals at our church, and then we took them to downtown Owensboro and got to serve those who were less, less fortunate. You did a great job, by the way. It was wonderful. And to make all of this happen, we had to transport some items. And so one of the things that we had to do was to get one of those big industrial-sized food warmers. So we did that. But to do that, we had to use a trailer. And the gamins did not own a trailer, so thankfully... Johnny, one of the fellow pastors um, at Matthew's table, was kind enough to let us borrow his trailer so that we could transport these items. Um, and so this, that's where the problem started, is that Johnny shouldn't have said yes. Uh-huh. Let's, let's we him. should have known that our success in trailers happened when we were children and not as adults <laughs> pulling them behind a vehicle. <laughs> different kind of trailer. Different kind of trailer. Different, um, different time in our lives. So... I'm going to let Johnny hold the responsibility here because he should have just said, no, Zach, you shouldn't. No, we're not going to do that. The trailer's fine. My ego is not. So I felt pretty confident that the trailer was properly attached to the hitch Mm -hmm. of the truck. Yep. I felt good, but good-ish about it. Um, Did all the things, tried to make sure that it wouldn't come loose, and it it, didn't when we were in the parking lot. So then we took off. And I said to you, before we go pick up this warmer, let me drive this thing around a little bit. I don't have a whole lot of experience driving trailers. It's just not my forte. Um, so let, let me drive this thing, do like a big loop around town before we go pick this thing up. And I have to start maneuvering in and out of tight spaces. And you're like, okay, cool. So we're going. We had barely pulled out of the church parking lot where we picked the trailer up from. And um, we go through an intersection. And there's a bump in this intersection. And shortly after we get through this intersection... Suddenly, I hear this awful sound followed by where the trailer had come loose, and we were dragging it behind us um, with just the the chains that were attached to the truck. So then I start slowing down, and the trailer rams itself up and underneath the bumper of my truck. Might have said a few bad words. More than a few. I'm just hanging out. And, you were calm and cool and collected. I really was. Which is really funny because I'm pretty neurotic usually until there's a crisis. And then when a crisis like comes along, I'm usually the, the chill one. I was not necessarily chill mm-hmm. this time. Um, I was more worried about like hit another vehicle hitting us or something like that. Like there was some, you know, it wasn't just because I was being dramatic. 
Um, and so I'm like, oh, crap. I might have said something other than crap, honestly. I've since repented. But anyway, the point is, so as I'm getting out of the truck, I turn around, and there are these two dudes from nowhere who have come up. And they're already back there working on it, trying to fix it. I'm like, what is going on? And one of the guys was like, yeah, we work at such and such muffler shop over here. We saw you going through the intersection. We weren't going this way, but we saw the trailer bounce and we knew it was going to happen soon. So we just decided to follow you till it came loose. And I'm like, these are those people that you hear about that live for this stuff. You know, like when your car goes off in the ditch in the wintertime and you're stranded and you need somebody with a pickup truck to come mm-hmm. down and pull you. Like, I do enjoy that. Like. I'm, I'm all about it. Our friend Kansas, you know, ran out of gas on the side of the road recently, and I got to go rescue her. She made all my dreams. You were through. super Zach that day. I was very excited yeah, about it. Yeah. Um, he wore his cape and everything. If Kansas listens to this, she may be mad at me for publicly telling the world what happened. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so. Um, <laughs> no one would be surprised. The, these guys, um, the, the, the trailer was stuck up under the bumper of the truck, right? And so these two dudes who were average sized dudes. We're like, hey, we're going to pick the truck up. We need you to, to pull us forward. Mind and you, like, Judah and I are in the truck still. Yeah, they're just hanging out. Yeah. And I was like, are you sure? Are you sure you guys can do this? And they were like, just go move the truck. And I was like, okay, you're in charge here. Clearly, I'm not capable of doing this. And so they lifted the truck while I pulled it forward. And then I had to back it up a little bit so they could read. And they they got her all hooked up and everything was fine. Um, and Johnny, in his graciousness, um, was very kind when I said, hey, uh, I, uh, you might need a new jack for your trailer. Um, he was, he was very gracious about it. Three different people so far, um, in the last couple of days that I've run into were like, Hey, were you broke down on the side of the road? And I'm like, no, I wasn't broken down. I just was stupid. Um, I dropped a trailer, I dropped a trailer in the middle of the road. And, um, so I have since, since dropped the trailer back off the, the proper way, um, properly removed it from the truck. And I never want to drive or pull one ever again. I am ashamed. Sometimes things don't work out the way you plan. So here we are. Mm-hmm. So, um, but our event was very successful. The event was successful. We got to feed um, over three hundred and seventy-five people. Yeah. So it was all worth you dropping the the trailer in the middle of. You know, I have street. a I have a phrase that I like to use every now and then. It's all for the kingdom. Uh, sometimes it, it's just not fun. Mm-hmm. So I did learn something else since our last episode okay. aired. Um, our last episode was like Love Lessons Unhinged. <laughs> We're really this way, but we've tried to do some editing um, over the first handful of episodes so that we sound professional because, you know, you hear that intro, Christian counselors and marriage experts, and then you've got a couple of ding-dongs. So we've tried to sound professional, at least in our editing. Well, not only that, you know, there are podcasts I listen to, and unless I really jive with the people, I need y'all to get to the point. Like, right. like get to the content, get to the good stuff. Right. And so we've been rushing to do that a lot of times and cutting yeah. out some of us yeah. through editing. And so we've gotten a lot of feedback. We didn't do that last time. No, no. uh, well, we were slot happy. Mm-hmm. and It was late. It was it past was, my bedtime. Was, Your medicine was, had worn off. It was a mess. So people loved it. Mm-hmm. And so we've decided that you guys are just going to get like raw, real, unadulterated, unedited. It's just, this is what I mean, you we're going to edit a little bit, but not no. too much. Every time you pick your nose, they're going to see it on camera. So we're still going to be appropriate, but we're also going to add in some of that stuff. Some days might be funny and some days might be, you yeah. know, more serious. Depends so on the topic love, at hand. Love lessons unhinged. Unhinged. Are we Can't changing that in? Near you. No, I think that we just keep, you know, it's 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 a lesson in. in um, How the Lord can grow you in any season you're in. That's good. Why, mm-hmm. why did Jesus do that? Sure did. Pastor. Hey, you want a fun fact? I knew this was going to happen. Yeah. How'd you slide that right in there? Here's our fun fact. Okay. So you know how you see people who've been married for a while and it's like, it seems like they start to look alike after a while. So it turns out this is really a thing and there's some science behind it. Okay. So I didn't know this was a thing, um, but. How did you stumble upon this? Apparently, I don't, I was reading something stupid on the internet. Who knows? You know, I just, I bank these things up and I I pull them out at the appropriate time. So. Um, It turns out that there is scientific truth behind this observation. A study from the University of Michigan found that the longer a couple is together, the more they do start to look alike. 
And so the reasoning behind this, they say, is because couples who do spend a significant amount of time together, uh, they end up mimicking each other's facial expressions oh. or they will start um, to adopt similar habits and kind of how they talk and do things, which I think is true. Like, yeah, we, we, we do say that. a lot of the same yeah. things. And so over time, that ends up creating similar like wrinkles and laugh lines. Oh. Makes sense, doesn't it? So what about people who look like their dogs? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I don't I don't know. You don't have an answer that. for that no, one? I don't okay. have anything scientific for that. Okay, but the that okay, so at least that makes sense because I have wondered how people look yeah. so much alike. Have you ever met a couple and you're like older and they're like, are they brother or sister? Right. Because it's, they look so much alike. Yeah. So interesting. So let's 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 just share with the world how you don't love me. What is it this time? <laughs> Tell the world what I've done to offend you. And not only great do I, Dr. Zach game. I want us to look like, but I want us to match. Oh no. And you will not wear matching outfits. No, I will not. What is wrong with it? I need I need you to explain why you're so passionate about it. Like what the the validation so not, do you get? It's not that I am s- like so desiring to match. It's that you. I'm not. It's that you won't. It's that you don't love me. At least not publicly. No, you want to wear like matching tie dye shirts that yes. say like I'm her and he's mine. Okay, no, with like little, arrows pointed at them. Although I have seen the ones that are like if if lost return to Rita and then like I'm Rita, like that that'd be great. Um, that would be pretty applicable with our relationship. Like, why can't we like when we go on vacation and like there's um, you know Hilton Head Island and it's on like the obnoxious tie dye? Why can't we get matching shirts? We can. We just can't wear them at the yes, same time we unless What's we're on vacation. No. Roy and Marie Hicks, some of our very dear friends. Hopefully they're listening and they haven't given up on us yet. <laughs> they love to wear matching shirts. It works for them. Yeah, because I, they love each other. I, I, when I see Roy and Marie do it, I think, oh, when I think of you and I do it, I think that's so cringy. That's cringe, as the kids say. There is nothing cringe about loving your spouse, Blair. I love you very much, but it does not mean that I want to share. What are we supposed to wear matching underwear next? Okay, they make those. No, don't make it weird. Why don't you love me? I do love you. And if that's the way I have to show it, then you are going to feel very unloved because yeah. I'm not going to do that for you. Clearly. We have worn similar like church logo stuff. Or yeah, but you've made me change if we're wearing the same church hoodie. If it's the same color. See? Why are you ashamed of me? I'm not ashamed. I just need some individuality, okay? No, you don't. Yes, I do. (laughs) After nearly 14 years, (laughs) you stuck with me, home girl. Gosh, I need to know what the people think. I need. This is something people need to sound. We're going to share this on our Facebook page. Um, Is it appropriate for you and your spouse to wear? Matching and or color coordinating clothes because there are color some people coordinating is fine and there are some people who won't wear color coordinating clothes either. I think that's great. Color coordinate all day long. We do that a lot. So it's just matching for you. It's when it's like copy and paste. What about like cute family pictures where like everybody and the dogs wearing the same kind of pajamas? Oh, that's cute. Because pajamas, it's... pajamas. How do I normally say? P- pajamas. Is that how I normally say pajamas? Yeah. Pajamas. No, we don't say that. I'm not Midwestern. No, pajamas. it's pajamas. Jammies. Ja- or jammies. There you go. <laughs> no, because that's for like Christmas, you know, pictures or something. Like that is intentionally that everybody's wearing the same. And we do do matching Christmas PJs for everybody. That's okay. So here's what I'm hearing. It's okay as long as it's on your terms. That's when we match. Why do you have to decimate me like but that? But if I want to what? match... Under certain conditions, it's not cringy. It's like, oh, that's cute. That's Just acceptable. like your love is available under certain conditions. I'm so over you today. <laughs> now, Welcome to lessons. There's no love left. No. <laughs> we get in my ruler and smack your hand right? when you don't follow the lessons. Okay. That I want to know what the people me. think. Yeah, we do. Get on our Facebook page. Well, that thought get on our Facebook page. We're going to ask a question. Do you, um, do you choose to is match with your spouse or is it cringy? Do you choose to match with your spouse or do you no longer love them? That's not going to be what the poll says. That can't be the only options. I have some PTSD from rulers. You were not a great kid. Okay. That's fair. Marilyn Roberts, my second grade teacher. God rest her soul. I believe she's gone on to be with the Lord now. Mm-hmm. She's gone to uh, glory at these, this point. She, my, my days in second grade were not glorious with her. 
she had this purple ruler. So you were a little hellion. I wasn't that bad all the time. Sometimes I was sweet. I don't have very many stories that you've told me that you were sweet. All the stories you told me are where you're being a little butthead. Okay. She smacked my hand with the ruler all the time. It was her favorite pastime. If I would try to ask a question and that I needed like actual direction on, mm-hmm. she would just smack my hand. It was very, Aww. it was very heartbreaking for little Zach. I did go back and see her several years later. I was in mm, 10th, 11th grade, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of my sisters had something going on at that elementary school. And so I stole back, back by and she was very kind and sweet. Then I think she had forgotten that I was a tiny terrorist in her classroom. Um, she probably was, forgot you at all and was just acting like she knew who you were. So also on the same day, I went, that was my second grade teacher. I went to my third grade teacher. Um, and she, um, she looked at me she said, it's Zach, right? I hadn't been in the school in several years, probably since I was in second and third grade. She said, it's Zach, right? I was like, yeah, good for you for remembering. And she's like, yeah, I can remember something. And I said, that's probably because I was such a bad kid. And she goes, yeah, probably so. <laughs> so anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up was really hard for me, okay? I know. I need some sympathy. Do you need empathy or sympathy? I need all of it. <laughs> I need you to wear a matching freaking t-shirt with me. Would that make you feel more loved? Yes. Would that take care of what Marilyn Roberts did to you as a child? Yes. Would that heal your trauma? Yes. I don't think it would. If it really would, you though, I'd go out in the middle out. of Frederica Street in a matching shirt and walk down. We could have our own gaming style parade. Down the street. Not. I we would. did it the other day when I dropped the trailer in the middle of the road. There was quite a parade of vehicles waiting for me yeah, to get out of the way. that's true. We weren't matching that day, though. Now, my attitude matched something. <laughs> Some bad words. Anyway. <laughs> so, we survived Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still alive. And... Um, it got me to thinking that, you know, it's funny because this time of year between Thanksgiving and Christmas is traditionally when the phone lines start lighting up at the office. Yes. Um, and many times it's because people go to their family for Thanksgiving. They realize they're crazy and then think, <laughs> oh, crap, I've got to do this again next month. Right. I've got to, I'm going to be re-triggered. Right. Next month. So let's talk about boundaries and why they're important. Boundaries. Not just not just around the holidays, but it's very timely right mm-hmm. now, right? Yeah, so this word has such a negative connotation mm-hmm. because um, people don't like boundaries when they're set um, against them, if you will, or set to where they're not supposed to cross over. Um, but boundaries are a really healthy thing. Mm-hmm. When you actually look at what a boundary is, it is really and truly establishing parameters to make sure that you are emotionally okay, that you're mm-hmm. taking responsibility for your own emotions mm-hmm. and that your own well-being is maintained, mm-hmm. as well as those that you're in relationship with. Yeah. So here's an official definition okay. from the internet webs. It, uh, emotional boundaries are taking ownership of your own feelings and not being made to feel responsible for other people's feelings, part one. And then part two, a frontier or bounding line that gives you a sense of entitlement about your personal space and privacy. So those are a bunch of $5 words, and I like to talk in 25 cent words. And so really what that means is, is just saying, I can only be responsible for how I feel. However, I'm going to set a line or a boundary so that someone else's behavior does not cause me or make me feel or get me to a point that I am going to act or feel or behave in a way that can create a negative impact on this relationship, right? No, I, I misspoke when I said make you feel because nobody can make you feel any kind of way. Um, despite the fact that you might want to blame them for it, you are responsible for your own feelings and your own emotions. You're choosing to have that yes. feeling. Now, maybe rightfully so. Right, right. That's not saying that you're not entitled to feel the way that you do. Mm-hmm. But boundaries help you to be able to uh, create a place where you know where the line is so that you... Um, don't go in that direction of that negative feeling or emotion because that can cause harm. Yeah. Right? So we hear boundaries and we think negatively, but we already do this in so many different areas of our life. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not emotionally. Mm-hmm. And so it's why are we allowed to set boundaries in other areas, but not emotionally? Yeah. For example, um, have you ever rented a billboard and put your, your uh, bank account routing number and the password to your bank account no. up on the, the billboard for hackers to get into? Can't no. Say I have. No. What about in your neighborhood? Have you given a key to every neighbor in your neighborhood? 
even the ones you've not met. Did you did you knock on the door and say, hi, nice to meet you. My name's Zach. Here's a key to my house. Come in anytime you want. Uh-uh. No, you restricted access. Yeah. Right? You were smart about who you gave access to. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with a boundary, with an emotional boundary. Yeah. We need to be smart about who we give access to to us and that needs to be based on their responsibility level how responsible they have been with the access that we've given them yeah and that's so, really smart have you ever thought about being a counselor that actually comes straight out of a book oh um lisa turkers good boundaries and goodbyes ladies if you've never read it i highly highly recommend it especially if you have trouble saying no or are a people pleaser mm-hmm. she's got a couple of good books on here's that. an aside mm-hmm. real quick not really this kind of goes with boundaries no is a sentence all by itself yes it's one of the most valuable lessons you've ever taught me because I am a people pleaser. Uh, purple people eater. Did you say I taught you that lesson? You did. Did I really? Yeah. Tell me all the ways. That was the only thing you ever oh, taught me. Okay. Anyway. Um, no. I taught Dr. Zach something? Gosh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We were, it wasn't talking about me. I hate it here. <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't feel safe in my own <laughs> So that's a joke. Don't call the police. So. As people pleasers, it's really easy to feel guilted and manipulated into doing things, isn't it? Absolutely. No is is a sentence all by its. You do not owe anyone an explanation. Scripture says, let your no be no, Mm -hmm. or let your nay be nay if you're a horse or you read that in the King James Version. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Or if you're a horse who reads in Shakespeare in English, then that's fine. That works, yeah. Um, but no is a sentence all by itself. You are not required to explain your no, to explain your reasoning. You are just allowed to say mm-hmm. no, even if it's your mama. So in that book, um, Lisa Turkhurst wrote it with her counselor, Jim Cress, and he says in there, children explain, adults inform. Mm. And so that's really important when you are communicating boundaries. Yeah. Um, but, but even before that, what are they and what are they not? So we've kind all of right. talked about what they are. Yeah. What are they not? So boundaries are not um, setting something up to hurt people. It's not punishment. Right. We're not punishing people. We're not saying you don't get access to me because you don't deserve me and, you know, doing your little Mm -hmm. Z-snap. Boundaries are protecting yourself and protecting the other person with the hope that it helps to keep the relationship intact. Mm -hmm. If you say that you're putting up boundaries because you never want to speak to so-and-so again, that's not really a boundary. It's not a boundary. And that's okay, by the way. If you don't want to speak to somebody, you're not obligated to. Mm -hmm. But um, let's let's call it what it is, that you don't want to talk to that person because you don't like them. Mm -hmm. Again, that you're allowed to not like somebody. Jesus said we had to love everybody, not that we had to like everybody. If you were cutting someone off without saying here's here's what will or here is what's going to change that Mm -hmm. then yeah that's not necessarily what we're talking about here but so a an understanding of when you might need a boundary Mm -hmm. emotionally um this might be when something is said to you or done to you that make you feel unwell emotionally that you feel like you are responding in an um, incorrect, um, unhealthy manner is probably yeah. the best word to, to use there. So if you are, um, you know, responding in a way that is hurtful, or harmful to you or the relationship. Kind of like when you won't wear a shirt that matches. <sighs> anyway, so <laughs> that's when... Did you when feel something just now? I did, I did. And so it. I had a personal boundary, mm-hmm. and that's the other thing I want to touch on here too. You're welcome. But I'm just here to help. <laughs> this boundary, and a good indicator that you might need one is if you are having a conversation with someone or you're responding and you feel a twinge of ugh at something that they've said or done that's making you respond that way. Again, you're choosing your responses. You might consider what's a boundary in this situation. For example, if you are sitting around eating Thanksgiving dinner and Aunt... Ida brings up politics. Freaking Ida, just shut up. I know. Like, why are we doing this, Ida? Then it might be, and her beliefs are so um, drastically different than yours are. And this is going to be a contentious conversation. You might set a boundary that says, hey, Aunt Ida, I'd really love to stay at this table and have dinner with you. But I don't want to debate politics. So can we take politics as a conversation point off the table? That's a boundary that you're setting. You're saying, I want to continue this relationship. I want to protect what we've got here 
But to do so, I cannot entertain a conversation about politics Mm -hmm. or religion or whatever family drama is at play. You know, insert whatever you want. So are you saying it's not appropriate for me to look at Aunt Ida and say to shut your stupid old wrinkly face, you hateful woman? No. That is an example of when you should have set a boundary, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. And you let yourself get so emotionally charged and moved that you exploded and you punished in that situation. You didn't do it to protect the relationship. You were doing it to defend, not to actually enhance and bring health to the relationship. And so we could talk about boundaries all day long because there's so much information Mm -hmm. out there when it comes to boundaries, but Mm -hmm. specifically boundaries around the holidays because you're going to be triggered. Mm -hmm. You're going to be around family that believe differently, that act differently that you realize, oh, okay, this is why, you know, we come together, you know, twice a year Mm -hmm. instead of once a week Mm -hmm. to do this because there are a lot of different varying beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to maintain protecting those relationships while setting boundaries. Yeah. So I will say, you know, I I see people in situations with their families and and there are people um, that I know that have reached a point in their families where they're like, I just can't go to holiday functions because it just becomes so toxic whether it's them or it's me or it's both i just have to stay away and i just want to remind people that um no you don't just have to love somebody because they're family however just cutting somebody off because you're upset um without actually seeking to find any kind of reconciliation is just as bad Mm -hmm. right um every family is dysfunctional i have never i don't like using blanket statements but i have never seen a family and the the years that I have been working with people in a counseling environment that is totally and 100% operating at a way that has no dysfunction. And you know, the difference in that is that there are those families that are dysfunctional that refuse to um, understand that they Mm -hmm. are and to do any work. And there are those families who realize that they have dysfunction, but they're working on it. Exactly. That's the the defining difference there is who's working to be healthier, Mm -hmm. to create as much health as they can, versus who is justifying and or continuing to live in that dysfunction. Just let you crazy hang out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so we've come up with a handful of of helpful holiday tips to deal with um, dysfunction. This really isn't just holiday specific. Uh, This can be used any time of year, but it's really helpful, especially like when Aunt Ida makes a comment about your fourth plate of food while she's brought her fourth husband to Thanksgiving. (laughs) Aunt uh, Ida. Or Christmas. I know. I've, I don't know that I know anybody named Ida, but if you have an Aunt Ida, I'm sure she's very sweet. She's a lovely lady. Right. But the so, one in our head's not. The right. woman we're blaming is not. She's like this old, hateful, like crotchety old woman. I'm getting like some like vibes from Christmas vacation. Yeah, I could see that. The like, old... like the, the Was grandma. she Aunt Ida? Was uh, that her name, Aunt Ida in that? Was it? We'll have to look this up. Anyway. Remember when they were around the table and she was going to say grace and she did the pledge to allegiance instead? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, man. Um, anyway. Oh. So we have some tips. <laughs> mm, and boundary lessons. Not even at all. Mm. Okay. Before, here's tip number one. Before you say yes to something, ask yourself how meaningful it is. Mm-hmm. So this is the, um, what's the lady on Netflix? Renee Brown. No. The lady who organizes stuff, who if it doesn't bring joy, you throw it out. Oh, uh, Marie Kondo? Is that it? Marie Kondo, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Uh, Brene Brown's great, too. But, um, you know, she's like, you know, if it if it doesn't bring joy, you set it aside. Doesn't so, spark joy. Yeah, so, you you know, you go through your house and you put out your bill. You find out your bills and your bra and your husband. <laughs> um, I think your bills, your bra, and your boo. They're all gone. All gone. <laughs> do you ever want to do that? And then your neighbor, you know, Mary's going, why is your husband in the yard? <laughs> Mary, he didn't spark any joy. Do you want oh, him? Man. Mary says, no, he's not sparking joy for me either. Mary really, we do have a neighbor named Mary. Yeah, she's pleasant. She's, yeah. Right. yeah. I don't know if she'd take me in though, if you got rid of me. I don't know that any of the neighbors would. I don't know any of That's our friends true. would either. That's true. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry. So uh, before you say yes to something, ask yourself how meaningful it is. Mm-hmm. Here's here's what I mean. Um, just because your family does something every year does not mean that you are obligated to continue doing it. If it is something that brings you stress or causes frustration. Absolutely. Um, there are families who 
will go Christmas shopping for a live tree. This is a real life story. I heard it from a former client. Um, they would go out as a family to pick a uh, Christmas tree. They do a live Christmas tree. And every single year they would get into a fight out on the lot. Like mom and dad would start bickering. The kids would get into it. It was just never a good situation. And finally, one year we were sitting in therapy and they were complaining about this. And I'm like, then why not go to Walmart and buy a fake tree? And the, the wife was like, I could never do that. We always had a live tree growing up. I'm like, well, do your parents still have a live tree? And she was like, yeah, it'll look great. There's your live tree. Go to Walmart and buy a fake one. And it was like this earth shattering information to them. So they went to Walmart and bought a, free, a fake tree and they didn't have a fight. And it was great. Just because something is a holiday tradition doesn't mean that you have to do it. Now, if it's something that's meaningful to your family, that's really important, whether it's, you know, some families do a cute thing now where they like them, they make a birthday cake for Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, that can be frustrating as a parent, but if you've got little kids, you know, helping them to understand the reason for the season, that's different. But if you're just doing it because, you know, mama and papa have always done it, ask yourself why. So mm -hmm. if there's anybody that's in a really dysfunctional family out there listening right now, they've already lost their minds during mm -hmm. that. They're already messaging back and forth, going, where are we going? Who are we going to see? Mammy and Pappy were doing that in the 30s yeah. when Aunt Ida was born. <laughs> Freaking Ida. Well, this next one goes into that. Yes. Don't let guilt drive your decisions. Yes. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Really assess what is going to work for my family in this season. What is going to mentally be, a, what, are, what are we going to do and what are we not going to do? What expectations are placed on us? And are there any that are placed on us that we are not able to meet in this season of our lives? Mm -hmm. And if that is true, then you don't have to be motivated by guilt and shame. Now, disclaimer, that does not mean that your mama might not try to make you feel guilty about it. Right? Yeah. <sighs> we Aunt always do this. Like and Ida, like, there she goes again. She is the worst. She's the she worst. is the worst person I've never met. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean that people are not going to try to make you feel guilty, but that does not mean that you have to take that on and agree that you are going to feel guilty. If you have made an educated adult decision based on facts, based on understanding the environment and what it is that you and your family need emotionally, mm -hmm. and you were setting a boundary saying, hey, we're not going to attend this year, or we're going to come a different day, or whatever it is that you're doing, mm -hmm. then you have nothing to be guilty of. You have made an educated decision at that point based on what it is that you and your family need. Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't like that decision, you can respect that the, fa the fact that they don't like it, but you don't have to allow yourself to feel guilty. You can say, I made this choice for a reason. They are trying to make me feel bad, guilt, shame, condemnation, but I'm refusing to take that mantle on, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's their problem. They need to deal with the fact that they are using guilt manipulation tactics to try to convince me right to change my mind yeah when my mind is already made up that's a them issue not a me issue right and passive aggressive comments count as attempts at guilt and manipulation yeah right? somebody makes a passive aggressive comment once you say what you mean by that mm -hmm. yeah hey what did you mean it. by that comment so here's an area where i need to grow in my own life mm -hmm. because when somebody makes a passive aggressive comment to me i don't get passive aggressive i get aggressive aggressive and um it's not christ-like but people typically only do it once yeah, so please, while, while Zach wants to work on that area, he doesn't need exposure therapy. Please do not right. um, come up and make passive-aggressive comments to him because he uh, doesn't do well in those situations. I don't do well at passive. Yeah. No. But in that same theme, especially when Aunt Ida brings up her political beliefs of how this great country is falling apart, um, which is funny because both sides say that, but that's not the point of the conversation. Um when that happens, also remember that you don't have to attend every argument you're invited to. Mm. It's an invitation, but yes. it doesn't mean that you have to accept that. Yeah, because guess what? You're going to have in nearly every family, uh, you know, around the, 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 the Christmas dinner coming up, you're going to have, you know, the one person who's like super edgy and she's 22 years old and she knows everything because she's been at college for three years and she's not a Christian anymore and she just, uh, all of you are idiots. All the way to the other end of the spectrum yeah. where you've got like Uncle Alf who's married to Aunt Ida and, you know, he makes really inappropriate jokes and you're not really comfortable leaving him in the same room as your kids. Mm -hmm. So. Dang, Alf. Alf and Ida. They're what are we going to do with them? I know. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Here's the next one. Yeah. Financial boundaries. Aren't money, important. money, money. Yes. 
if you struggle to keep the lights on in your house, then you do not have to buy Christmas gifts for all 83 of your nieces and mm-hmm. nephews. So I saw something neat that uh, people are doing now where they will put like nieces and nephews, all the names in a bowl and then you pick out each one or assigned one or two oh, cool. and you pick out and that's the one you buy for so that you don't have to go and buy a ton of present for every niece mm-hmm. and nephew. And I think if you have a large family, then that is a really smart boundary to have mm-hmm. in place, a really neat thing to, to bring up. Yeah. All them kids don't need those dang presents anyway. They need to be thankful for what they've got. Well, aside from that, like financially, you also need to set boundaries for your own financial well-being. Yes. And so this could go two ways. This could be expectations of family that you are to buy for nieces and nephews or family or whoever it is, presents. Or maybe it's not presents. Maybe it is contributing to like a Christmas fund Mm -hmm. where we do fun Christmas activities or whatever financial contribution you're asked to make. It might be the expectation of others that's placed on you, but it also could be where you're placing that on yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that I have to do this because it's, A, what we've always done or what I think we should do. Or it's expected of me. It's expected of me or it's what I want to do because it will make me look good or meet whatever need that I have. When in reality, this might be, and what we've not talked about, time for you to set a boundary on yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we sure like to throw out boundaries for other people. But we don't like to talk about that we may need to set boundaries on ourselves and set consequences on that for our own protection. I'm only going to spend $100 on gifts for family. And if I go outside of that, then the consequences are... I'm going to beat myself up. No, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. Grace, grace. Oh, okay. <laughs> the consequences of that could be I'm going to tell someone who's going to hold me accountable to return some gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take that money out of another budget. Maybe it's my fun budget or my eating out budget. I'm going to remove money from that to cover it. So I have to feel that consequence later. What are we going to do? And that's for our protection because we're teaching ourselves something when we're doing that. We're holding ourselves to that. Otherwise, we'd spend 10 grand a year on Christmas, each family. And that's, you know, while the economy might not might like that, our, our checkbooks are not. We're not going to be sustainable year long, year round. So anyway. All year. Why use many word when little word do trick? (laughs) For our office (laughs) listeners. Anyway, financial boundaries are important. And don't beat yourself up, literally. Yeah. Okay. Or figuratively. (laughs) Do not go out in the front yard with reindeer, Santa Claus, and all the Christmas lights up and start punching yourself in the face because you only spent $100 on Christmas presents. But if you dramatic. did do that, will you record it? And will you send it to hello at lovelessons.fm? <laughs> <laughs> because Zach, Zach and I would very much love that as our Christmas present. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, plan out verbal boundaries that you'll set with your family members. This is not standing in the shower and planning out how a fight's going to go. <laughs> And I said, and she said, ooh. Right. Mm-hmm. This is um, know what you're going to say when you get there so that it doesn't turn into an argument, such as, hey, Aunt Ida, instead of saying, you stupid old wrinkly, crotchety woman, Aunt Crust Crust over there, it says, I don't know where that came from, sorry. She must feel so bad as a person. I know. Well, with all the things messy. you're saying about her. Um, I'm being aggressive, aggressive to this mm-hmm. made up person. I really don't have an Aunt Ida, by the way, for those who are listening. And Aunt Ida is not a code word for something else either. I'm just, <laughs> anyway. Um, but know what you're going to say so that when that conversation does come up, you're not exploding in anger. You're not creating further distance. So kind of like what you said, whatever you said, it was really smart sounding about not, um, you know, I don't want to have this conversation about politics. I want to remain at this table. Mm-hmm. Know how you're going to uh, respond. Mm-hmm. And it, as as also as important, Make sure that you and your spouse are on the same page Mm -hmm. because when you get there, if your mother-in-law drives you crazy and you have to set a boundary, then your spouse doesn't need to come up behind you and totally just negate all of that by Mm -hmm. saying, oh, come on. She's my mom. She didn't mean anything by it. Right. Yeah. If you don't want your mother-in-law to feed your two-month-old baby mashed potatoes and you tell her no and she gets mad, then your husband comes up and says, it's not a big deal. Then go get a new husband. No, that's not how we do this either. That's not how we do but but really and truly, there's conflict there, right? You're either going to have a blow up or you're going to shut down and you're going to try to talk about it later. And yeah, you know, so if 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 your mother in law crosses boundaries like that, then have a conversation with your spouse ahead of time. Hey, mm-hmm. I, I want to do this because I want to continue to 
um, have a healthy relationship with mm-hmm. with your mom, with with my mother in law. I'm not doing this as a as a punishment to her, but it is a hard boundary that I have out of care for my own child or or whatever it may be. Right. Um, it's important that you're on the same page so that you create a united front. Yeah. Maybe that is being on the same page that you give each other a look when it is time to get out of Dodge. Mm-hmm. And you know every couple has that look, right? If you say you don't, you're lying. Yes. This is... Or you have a very healthy family at which can I come to yeah, what's that Christmas? Like? Um, figure out what your, your escape plan is and communicate mm-hmm. that ahead of time. Yeah. Is it like three escape. three blinks and like a nose rub? Right. And then it's like, got to go. <laughs> is that like 30 minute warning? That's it. Yeah. That's it. So the next one is stick to language that is free of blaming and shaming when you set boundaries. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So instead of saying, you never, you always, you did this when you're setting a boundary, while it is important to, to describe what it is that they've done, when you are informing them of why you're setting the boundary, it's I don't feel blank. And so when you do blank, I don't feel safe when you yell at me. And so... If yelling happens or continues, then I'm going to remove myself from this room. Mm -hmm. You are saying, I am feeling this way. I'm taking responsibility for my feelings. And so I'm feeling this. This is why I'm doing this. Not you yell at me. And if you yell at me again, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, they did yell at you. But why is yelling an issue? Mm -hmm. That's what we need to talk about. They might not respect your feelings. But at that point, it hopefully will deflate some of the defensiveness because mm-hmm. you're saying, I'm feeling this way and not I'm telling you to change your behavior mm-hmm. for no reason, that it's causing me harm. Yeah. And it, it, it they, those are simple conversations. They don't have to be these, this big dramatic thing. It's just, hey, if this happens, if A happens, then B is going to, mm-hmm. to be the result of that. Not a consequence, just a result. Yeah. And if you are planning out your verbal boundaries ahead of time, again, not mapping it out like an argument in the shower, but if Aunt Ida always brings up politics, then we already know it's going to happen, right? Like you can sit here and listen to this and you already know some of the things that are going to be conversations at at your around the table Mm -hmm. because (laughs) it's history. We've done this over and over and over again. You're going to know who's going to say what at what point and who's going to get mad and whatnot. So if you know those things, you can anticipate, you can plan out what you're going to say and when you're going to say it because you already have an idea of how it's going to go. Yeah. This episode of the Love Lessons podcast is brought to you by Crosspoint Theological Seminary. CTS offers online education and degree programs in the areas of Christian counseling, life coaching, business management, and church leadership. Learn more and apply online at www.crosspoint.education. Plus, use code LOVE on your application and CTS will waive your enrollment fee. Crosspoint Theological Seminary provides an affordable, quality Christian education to move your ministry forward. So everybody's got a little crazy in their family, especially around the holidays. The Uh crazy likes to come out. Sure does. Do you have any experience in that? (laughs) I mean, last time you told us about... uh, Five in the front yard. Anything else happen? Um, so we do have in my family a. Um, it's a tradition. It's a tradition. It happens guess, almost every year. If of um, you know stray dogs, how they don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> yeah. We we like to collect stray people, mm. and so we would have you know not every year. You said it happens every year. It happens every year. There be people in and out, but. Yeah. I've never been to a, a, a family gathering of yours around the holidays. Uh, now it's been a few years since we've all been together. Yeah. But So that's unfair to say it, it happens now. But right. at least in, in the past, when we all got together around the holidays, there was never a single Thanksgiving or Christmas that I knew everyone who was there. Yeah. And we, your family's not that big. We Yeah, they're not. We, we like to invite strays or make sure, which, you know... No one should be going without yes. having people, and yes. so it's it's all good and good hearted and oh, has yeah, the best absolutely. of intentions. What, you know, one of the things we were just talking about this last night. One of the things that I so appreciate about your mother is that she, you know, you hear people say that like so and so would give you the shirt off their back. Your mother would absolutely give somebody the shirt yeah. off her back, even if she didn't have anything left in her closet when yeah. she got home. Yeah, and so you know, it's it always comes from this place of just mm-hmm. never wanting anybody to feel left out, right. wanting to have something. But as you can imagine, it definitely creates some interesting stories and some interesting situations. Yes. Yeah. So this one year, um, we had a, a lady who came with her son. He was he was an adult. He was a young oh, yeah. adult he son, but he I. was oh okay. So he was he was grown. 
Um, and I don't, I remember there was some story that she lived, she had bought some land. She'd come to some money. She'd bought some land, but she ran out of money buying the land. She, she used everything she could yeah, to buy the land. Yeah, they wanted to house or like a mobile home Yeah, they wanted like. to, to put something on the, on the land, but they didn't have the money. And so they were living in this, like, it was, it was a shed on, that was already built on the yeah. land. Yeah. Had like no electricity, no running water. And they lived in this like tiny little, no bathroom facilities, nothing. Um, it was it was literally four walls and a roof. I think. Yeah, I, I mean it was it was essentially homeless. It was just yeah. you had some land, um, and so she was hiring her somewhere there. And you know when we talk about family dysfunction, um, so my grandfather was very particular about food, mm-hmm. and because of how he was raised by his grandparents, mm-hmm. and uh, just in a different culture where the men were served and the women did the serving. And all of it. So, you know, we would sit in our, our open concept house where the kitchen, the living room and the dining room were all, you know, right there. And he would watch us cook. And um, so this particular lady, I don't remember her name, was there and she was kind of eating out of pots mm-hmm. and while drinking all the wine in the house, by the way. Yeah. So drinking all the wine that was in the house yeah. and was getting a spoon and eating out of pots, which is a big no, no in my family. That was an unwritten rule. Germs and grow like you don't do that. So, I, know, I know. Out of all the things. Out of all the things. But she... But um, fine in the front yard's fine. Yeah, fine in the front yard's fine, but don't Got it. don't double Got dip it. a spoon. She was, she was, and um, I remember my grandfather was hollering at her across the room. He didn't know this lady. He was like, and he was cussing at her. What are you doing? And it was like, and she wasn't offended that he was hollering at her, and she just kept doing it I think it she was too inebri- inebriated by this point. Yeah, and so then there were deviled eggs, and she kept eating them to the point where there were none left at the end of the meal. Yeah, but and before we even got to the meal. Before we even got to the meal. That's right. They were they were gone, and he was he was just, he got, ang- he was angrier and angrier, and his foot just kept, like, it was. Yeah, he shakes his foot when he gets it mad. Was, I was just waiting for it to it explode. <sighs> yeah, it is. And, um, you know, that was, we, of course, took our cranberry sauce out of our, our jar, out of our can, Ocean Spray. Right. Cut it up. Nobody ate it. Nobody ate it. Cut it up and put it on a crystal platter and, and nobody touched mm-hmm. it. But, you know, it's Thanksgiving. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. It's one of those oh, great family Christmas. traditions. No, it was, it was Thanksgiving. It was Thanksgiving because she was there for Christmas. She was there later for Christmas. Oh, yeah, she came back. Yeah, because we had an extra gift, and so we put so, her name on it. Oh, that's right. So let me tell you what happened uh, after dinner. Oh, this is yeah. This is my favorite yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. This is probably one of my favorite stories of all time. So this woman, bless bless her sweetheart, um, she had some type of, of physical disability or handicap. She had to walk with a cane. Yes. A, a cane. She had, I don't know, she'd had an injury or something, but she was walking with her cane at Thanksgiving and again at Christmas, so I assumed it was chronic. So she is inebriated, and some of the family members had decided to go out into the backyard, big backyard at, at your grandparents' house, um, and have a bonfire. Which was a very, we'd never done that before. She yeah, was like, oh, this was, is a new family that was, thing. That was nice, yeah. we think. Um, and so, but the the yard goes like just down a hill. Yeah, it's it's a just slope. a big old slope. Mm-hmm. And so she walks out off of the, the back step in her already struggling to, to get around mobility issues plus being drunk and she just loses her balance and goes rolling down the hill and she roll. I mean, it was one of those things where you're like, you're watching it in slow motion and you're like, no, somebody get her. <laughs> and uh, the fire. thank you right toward the fire. And thankfully her son stopped her and snatched her up right before she rolled right into the fire. Right into the fire. And it shouldn't be funny. It really shouldn't. But this is the epitome of a holiday at your family's mm-hmm. house. To say that my nerves were shot at the end of it because the dogs were barking, everybody's hollering. The kids were really little. You know, the girls were tiny. yeah, they're we're running trying around, around trying, trying to keep them contained. We got fires, and we got people rolling into fires, and we've got to cook and clean. And it was, we were exhausted before it was all said and done. It was a mess. So, but I will say, your family's pretty normal around the holidays. It's pretty, yeah. no, I guess, normal subjective, but there's not any, usually anything unexpected like that yeah that we happens. don't have any crazy like explosions or anything we're just passive aggressive yeah we just hold it all in and make little comments as we walk through the house yeah, yeah. it's very healthy mm-hmm. and then i get aggressive aggressive we just repeat the cycle it's it's a whole thing <laughs> merry christmas i've got used to aggression <laughs> <laughs> this year present. i'm giving everyone my opinion you're welcome <laughs> 
So I want to know, we want to know, what are some weird family uh, traditions that mm-hmm. happen uh, around your family or weird stories that have happened? Keep it appropriate, but send them to us on Facebook. Yeah. You know, here's something fun that you could do. Record a video and send to us. And okay, we might be fun. able to feature it mm-hmm. um, on the podcast. Yeah. So, so speaking of, of holidays, I, I want to talk about something and I want to, I want to clear the air right here on love lessons. I can tell by the change in your body language and in your tone of voice that I'm not going to like this very much. I just need to know why you're not normal. (laughs) What did I do this time? You know, the more that you say these things to me, the more that I understand why people uh, think that you give me a hard time all the time. No, it's because something is wrong with you. The more people like are justified in knowing that I want to like cut you. What did I do? You, what did I do? And your family. You want to eat. Actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, I think my family does it too, but I still don't like it. <laughs> Hello. Why? why? Hello. Oh, no. I have no part in this. Um, why do you want to eat Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner at two or three in the afternoon? What is wrong with you? <laughs> How long it takes to get it done? Dinner or lunch is not at 3 p.m. Why can't you eat at 5 or 6? It's too late. Why is it too late? Because you haven't eaten anything all day long. Why have you not eaten anything? you're saving up for the big meal. You can have leftovers later. It has nothing to do with leftovers. you got to have room in your belly. Exactly. You might not be able to eat it all right now. You can have more later. No, because you want it all right. You've been saving up all year for Thanksgiving. How often do you have Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner throughout the year? <sighs> The turkey and the ham and the roast Well, it doesn't beef matter whatever I do. We that. eat it at 3 freaking clock in the afternoon just... like a bunch of savages. Is this a hill that you're going to die? Yes. <laughs> eat lunch like a normal person. Even if you want to eat lunch. You like can't a... have it done by lunchtime. Not unless you start cooking the day no. before. You don't eat a normal lunch. Eat a sandwich. Eat something. I'm getting a little hangry right now. Just thinking. You if cannot you have eat, eat on the day of Thanksgiving if it's not Thanksgiving. Unless yes, you're snacking you on things you're cooking. No, you can. Or I've made you sausage balls. In yeah, that, yeah. No, you can. And it, it's fine if you want to eat lunch at like 11 o'clock. One does not simply eat lunch the day of Thanksgiving or Christmas. You. Unless it's Christmas breakfast. Can't and that's eat, acceptable. Oh, okay. Unless, so Santa, unless again, Santa drops you off a little. Yet again, little here we are. Here we are. As long as it's okay with Blair, we can do it. I just think that it is ridiculous that you can't eat lunch at 11 a.m. On the day of Thanksgiving, it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving themed. Because you're not going to be hungry when it's time to eat yes, at two you o'clock. Will. <laughs> I have never once had a situation where I haven't been ready to eat something. Okay, now I, I mean maybe if you're like fitness is my passion and you weigh like 110 pounds soaking wet, they still okay. like to eat too. Okay, well, what about those people that like go around and they're like, I just eat like a bird. I never want anything else. Shut up, Aunt Ida. <laughs> anyway. No. Eat Thanksgiving and Christmas at a normal time. We did this this year. What time did we eat Thanksgiving dinner? One o'clock. That was the latest that it was acceptable to call it a lunch. And that's fine, right? And it worked out. We're still here alive to tell the tale. And we got to have it again for dinner because let's, I mean, I love Thanksgiving leftovers. Let's roll. We do eat the crap out of some leftovers for Thanksgiving and Christmas to the point that like we're sick of it by the time. That's that, why like, we only do it twice a year. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. After like day four, I'm like, all right, babe, I love you. But if I see another deviled egg, I'm going to lose my crap. Can you imagine those families who have like four or five Thanksgivings that they have to go through that throughout awful. the weekend? Yeah. Like I would be like, can we just do a breakfast, guys? Can we just have like a Thanksgiving breakfast? Can we just FaceTime and be done with this? Can we? Can we? <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat my cap crunch while you feed your Cheerios. <laughs> See you at Christmas. Right. Ain't out of. <laughs> Freaking. She doesn't know how to use FaceTime. No, she doesn't. She's still using a flip phone from like Jitterbug or something. <laughs> That's the thing. Does she also have a life alert button around her neck? Absolutely, she does. <laughs> and she's going to be needed if she runs her mouth one more time. <laughs> At Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. She's lucky she made it out this year. I've made up this entire person in my head, and I'm convinced she is the worst person ever. Oh my it's like Hitler in spot number one, and I'm in number two. Dang. Oh, gosh. That's pretty good. 
I've had a horrifying realization. <laughs> what is it? I don't know that we actually love each other. What? So a few weeks ago on the show, we asked people um, what they call their spouse in their phone, what their their spouse is listed as uh, as a contact. Yes. As as a contact. At, I'm still learning English. Anyway, and so this all started. If you go back and listen to uh, it was I think it was our previous episode. Um, where Haven, our daughter, because she was being nosy and watching when I was texting you, was offended because you are sitting my phone as Blair. Mm -hmm. Because that's your name. It's my government name. Right. It, it just seems... That, that, I don't, Common sense. Right. Yeah. Um, and so then I posted and I shared this on the Love Lessons Facebook page. Got a poll. And everyone's offended. Because... They don't just call their spouse their name in their phone. They like have their cute little pet names or they have emojis or, and to me, this seems utterly ridiculous. But when I say that we're in the minority out of all the comments that we got, one other person had their spouse listed as their name in their phone. So let me, let me, let me share some examples here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Kim Fogel says that she calls her husband, David, the hubs. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Nick Evans says, uh, best wife ever. Stop sucking up, Nick. Um, Bambi says that, um, her husband, Jeremy is listed as babe with two hearts on the end, which seems very sweet. Um, Jeremy owns his own business. And so she had to share Jeremy's contact info with a customer one time. <laughs> and she said, I accidentally sent his contact to a customer as babe. He was very confused. And, um, Bambi had to explain that. See, if he had just been in there as Jeremy, it would have made sense, right? Yeah. Um, our friends, Brandy and Charlie, who Brandy thinks that we're headed for divorce at this point mm -hmm. because of how we have each other listed. Um, she has her husband, Charlie, uh, listed as um, my sweet husband. I've never called Charlie my sweet husband, so I don't get that. <laughs> Um, some people just have husband mm -hmm. with hearts mm -hmm. and, hubby. um, yeah, hubby and like, so Sammy and, um, Heidi, Amy, several people were just like my husband, my honey and stuff like that. Um, one of my favorites is our friend, Karen Eaton, who is as practical as we are. And I love that about her. She has hers in her phone, uh, her husband, Dan, in her phone as my husband or my baby, Dan. Okay. Not because she's trying to be sweet, but because she said when she um, is in her vehicle and she's trying to call him via Bluetooth and she says, call Dan, it always calls one of the Davids in her phone. Mm. And so she had to go with my baby she Dan. She had to hack it. Yeah. Yeah. But I do have one personal favorite. Okay. And I'm not sure. I'm not even sure I want to ask any follow-up questions. Okay. Um, our friend Shauna Moore. Okay. Has her husband James <laughs> listed as gangsta. Gangsta? Gangsta. Not even okay. gangster. Gangsta. Mm -hmm. um, which is funny because if you know James, he's one of the most quiet, like, yeah, mild chill. people. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that, that he's he's super gangsta. I mean, I think he's cool. But um, that that's... And so I think I'm going to start calling you gangsta in my phone. Okay. It was actually um, Giselle is the only person um, on this, this head of everybody who commented who's normal. And use his first name. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think she has first name and last name. We're not that far. We're not that formal. Yeah. But um, now that being said, if you ever are in conversation with me and you call me Zach to my face, I will commit a felony. Yeah, because that's not your name. Right. Like I am baby, your honey, mm -hmm. your sweet pea, your love of my life, moon of my stars. One of those. <laughs> but in your phone, uh -huh. Zach is totally yeah. appropriate. Yeah. If. if if I'm at the house and I holler for you across the house, it's not, hey, Zach, come here. Yeah. It's babe. Babe. Yeah. Unless it's been like four times and I haven't heard you, at which point then you're going to start using my real name. Yeah. And that's acceptable. Yes. But if I'm just in conversation, I'm like, hey, Blair, what do you think about this? No. Like, no. Do not do that to me. How dare you right. say that to me? You're going to set me on fire. Yeah. Or throw a chainsaw at you. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know what this means now. I don't know if we need to add some emojis or what. Um, you probably had a heart, I guess. Gross. What about them, like, double heart, pink double heart things? That might not be a thing. But you're not Zach Hart. You're, you're Zach. Gammon. 
That's my last name. I'm not going to put that in there. No, that's, that's too that'd formal. be weird. No, because I'm just what if, I, what if I did like Karen and said, my baby Zach? Please don't do that. I think it's weird. Okay. It's just cheesy. I, look, we're very affectionate people. Because very affectionate Like, it's not people. like we're, like, very formal with each no. other. Like, we don't, like, shake hands goodnight. <laughs> It was a wonderful day with you. <laughs> it's been very pleasant. Good Thank night. Thank you very much. <clears throat> but um, it just it just feels weird. Can I can I have a, a confession time? Okay. I always secretly judge those people who had like pet names. I do and too. Emojis. I do too. For their spouse, like ew. Yeah. And now I think I might have to turn into one of them. Well, they're judging I us. Pressured. Yeah. Appears very oh, yeah. easily. Peer pressures. Oh yeah. I'll jump right in. Right. So now I feel like I have to conform. Okay. I guess I can do like the hard eyes or something. I just, every time I text hard you, eyes. Okay. I'm going to see that and I'm going to be like, oh. And your friends are going to see yes. that. Yes. I think it's more acceptable for guys to not have that in their phone than it is for girls to um, have. So our friend Roger, who doesn't listen to the podcast, so what kind of friend is he? Um, <laughs> he, he literally made fun of the show and didn't even know what it was called the other day. And I was like, thank you for your ongoing support. Mm-hmm. Um he has his wife Brittany in his phone as little mama, and I think he's in her phone as big daddy. I may have mentioned this last week, so we could go that route. Yeah, that's funny. But if you ever call me big daddy to my face, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> it's weird. I can't use the same names they're using, but right. Um, what about love of my life and moon of my stars? What if we? It's too long. You could it's be gonna, love you're going to have to, like, it's going to show up on your phone. Fi- what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a fade out? He's my mama. Just skip oh, on. My love, my llama. Mr. Llama, llama. I feel like a custom ringtone for me. That's a shaggy reference for all of you children. Right. For all the, the, the people out there born after cool 2001. Kittens. I always cringe, as the kids call it. Um, but if you have like all of that stuff, you're going to have to like, the phone's going to have to ring eight times for it to all <laughs> scroll across the screen so that you can see like, uh, is this my honey, my moon and my stars, my sunshine? My, what, is, what is he today? I've got it. Okay. I'm going to put you in there's pizza hut. <laughs> <laughs> you want to explain that for our friends who, um, who are nice and, you know, I don't think, understand I think you dark humor on the internet. It. It's kind of like when, you know, you're. There's like a meme on Facebook where the boy picks up the uh, a guy picks up his girlfriend's phone and he's like, "Babe, why is Pizza Hut saying good night? I love you." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put you That's, there. You could pizza put me as Pizza Hut. That would be funny. Okay. <laughs> you could put me in there as Domino's. I can accept. <laughs> Ooh, no, Papa John's. Papa John. Okay, whatever. Don't be gross. <laughs> What's wrong with okay. you? Okay, so we have to make some changes in our life. I'm sorry, I don't love you enough to have emojis. It's heartbreaking, but somehow I'm going to get through it. I'm going to process through these emotions. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, if you figure it out, let me know. Okay. I'm not heartbroken. Honestly, you're probably just going to continue being Blair, and I'm going to continue judging people. Uh, oh no! Oh no! Are you no! No! Into the pressure. We have to both do it because if I do I it, and you do don't. It. Then I'm going to feel like I love you more, and I can't be in a relationship where I feel like we're lopsided. <laughs> can't do it here's the deal what if i put a christmas tree beside you because you bring me joy and so does christmas which is why i would put pizza beside your name oh <laughs> you could do a pizza emoji like a little yeah. slight pizza slice this is my wife pizza blair um <laughs> really? i just I, ju- I just don't know if i can do it i don't know if i can bring myself to do it it's mm. okay well, this is probably an area we're gonna we're gonna have to take some time and process before we move into it. It's an if, unknown area. It's okay. If this is um, if you're in a relationship where this is the worst thing going on in your marriage, I think you're doing. Well, okay. they were doing okay. Yeah. yeah. This is a hard question, um, but it, it's really important. And so the person who shared it is is going to remain anonymous. But um, we appreciate their bravery and willing to even send the message. It says, I recently ended an affair and my wife doesn't know yet. Mm. I'm struggling with how to confess this to her. How should I go about this? Um, From professional experience and lived experience, um, I can tell you the longer that you keep it in, the more trouble it's going to cause. Yes. Like an infection. 
Yes. The worst, if, if you do not deal with the infection, it will get worse. Mm-hmm. It will take over. So scripture tells us that everything done in darkness will come to light. Mm-hmm. And I can assure you, just from a place of, of, of looking to heal the relationship, coming clean about it and you expressing it's going to be a whole lot better than the other person finding out. Yes. And nine times out of ten, the other person will always find out. And that doesn't mean that God cannot redeem it if the other person finds right. out. That does not mean that at all. It just means that if you come clean about it, you're already skipping the step of repentance, of, of appearing to have to be repentant, if that makes sense. So if you come clean about it, you're saying, hey, here's what I've done, and I want to do something different. You're being repentant of your own choice and not because it seems like you're yes, trying to do that, it. Thank you. Yes. yes. It's it not. And so I was having a moment there. I was like, is she telling us we don't have to be repentant now? No, What's no, going no, on? no, 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 no. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> no, it just you're doing so of your own choice and it and it's in good faith as opposed to sometimes the spouse can say, Are they really repentant or are they just saying it because mm-hmm. they want me to not be upset with them? They got um, caught. They got caught versus they you know, so it just it makes it a little easier. But it doesn't mean that you still can't heal from that. Yeah. Um there are people out there and even therapists out there who have encouraged people do not come clean to your spouse. That is the worst thing that you can yeah, do. That's a crop. Yes. It's it's unbiblical. Mm-hmm. Even when we talk about conflict with another person, it never says, don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. No, right. it says go to that person. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, unbiblical. Mm-hmm. You're going to confess this to your wife, and it is everything's going to blow up. Just be prepared for it. Your marriage will never be the same. But what I can tell you is that your marriage has the opportunity to be better. Just because it's not going to be the same doesn't mean it's going to be for the worse. Right. Now, many times we experience the worse before we get to the better. Oh, yeah. And that's what's going to happen when you when you mm-hmm. confess this. I mean, I don't want to paint a, a picture of rainbows and butterflies here, but you, you're you going to go through a season where she's not going to trust a word you say. She's mm-hmm. going to want to see your phone every 10 minutes. She might want to install an app where she tracks you to figure out where you're going. Yep. She is going to question every conversation that you've had for the last how many ever years and wanting to know if you were being truthful. She is going to... Want to know why you like those girls' pictures on Facebook or Instagram. Mm-hmm. She's going to accuse you of looking at other people, even if you're not looking at them. She's going to do all these things. And guess what? You let her. Small because... price you pay. Yes, you you lose all right to privacy, mm-hmm. and this this is something that I have debated with other other clinicians before. In my opinion, you lose all right to privacy. You you have caused um, very sincere harm to the relationship, and now you have to do some work. And what I really encourage folks to keep in mind is that you may have ended this relationship with this other person that you've been having an affair with, or maybe it was just a one night stand or whatever it is, but you have, you've moved on from it. But just because it's in your past does not mean that it's not in your spouse's future or in your mm-hmm. spouse's present rather yes. it's in your past, but it's in their present. Mm-hmm. They're having to work through it and that's going to take some time. So you may feel like, you know, I've moved on from this and I've, you know, I feel good and I know I'm not going to do it again, but they're living in that every day. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's the trail trauma off. is a real thing. Yes. Yes. It's going to um, it's going to cause a lot of hurt, mm-hmm. and um, your wife uh, is going to say some things that are um, really hurtful to you, probably out of anger, unless she's you know a saint, right? Um, and it, it's going to take some time. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that I've been asked, and I'm sure you've probably been asked too, is like, okay, how long is this supposed to take? It's different for everybody. It is. But you have to rebuild trust, and you only rebuild trust by being trustworthy. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's twofold. So the person who has been untrustworthy has to start becoming trustworthy and building trust. Mm -hmm. The responsibility is on them to start that process. Mm -hmm. And over time, as the person who has been offended uh, against, the offense happened to, sees their spouse being trustworthy and building that, then they should slowly start trusting Mm -hmm. again. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. Again, it's different for every couple, but slowly as they see, okay, this person is not the same person they were. They're making different choices. They are doing things that um, I deem are trustworthy. They're meeting the needs that I have in the relationship. Our relationship is different than it was. That's when it's like, okay, you're going to have to not hold this over their head forever. Mm-hmm. Process through your own hurt, but forgiveness is key here. And it is attainable. Right. Absolutely. I would say, and I would hope you would say the same thing that I, I trust you wholeheartedly. And, oh yeah, we don't have any issues with no. phones or where you go and who no. you're talking to. Like, that's never even a thought that I have. Mm-hmm. No, not a thought. I actually think about it less now than I did before. 
Yeah. And not that I thought about it before the affairs, because that, that I never thought that that would be a thing that happened. But now um, I never, ever mm-hmm. think about where you're at. Or I mean, I usually know, because usually can, we, we just are very connected yeah. throughout our days. Yeah. So we don't spend time doing things we don't know about. Either. And, you know, it's it's nice not having to worry, is my phone on me? Is she going to say something? They're going to send a right. text when they're not supposed to send a text? Right. Um, now I keep my phone on me all the time because I lose it if I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. And so I just always scary because I have this bad habit of putting it on vibrate and then forgetting where it is. Um, but I mean, there's just, there's freedom and saying, I don't know where my phone is. And I don't, if, if you want to go through it. Yeah. Nothing to hide. Right. Maybe you'll find something more exciting than I do. Right. So point is you have to tell her and you have to tell her soon. Mm-hmm. So if you, it, whether you're this person who submitted this question or you're somebody else who has, you know, been in a similar situation, if um, you are holding this in, you need to let it out um, because there's freedom and there's healing. It, again, it's not going to be easy. Um, but, you know, when you break an arm, there's there's a lot of hurt mm-hmm. and there's a lot of pain, um, but it, it can heal. And it won't ever look the same. You know, if you get an x-ray of those bones, they'll never look the same again. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that you can't come back. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, this whole process is kind of like resetting a bone that's set incorrectly. That's the analogy I was looking for. Thank you. Brought the whole back around. You for did. You. Yeah. You saved the whole podcast. Mm-hmm. This thing's staying on because of your single mm-hmm. contribution. I'm like, I'm like the electric company. I keep the lights on. Mm-hmm. So don't forget to submit your dirty laundry questions to us. You can send them to us on our Facebook page or shoot us an email. Hello at lovelessons.fm. And of course, if you want those to be anonymous, we'll keep those anonymous for you. Are you going to say goodbye? Am I supposed to? That's what I just said. I didn't hear you say that. I said, and then you say, we'll see you next time. Okay. I didn't hear that. Lord have mercy to carry this thing by myself. Love lifted me and I had to lift this whole podcast. I want to punch you so bad right now. Focus. Three. (laughs) Is that it? (laughs) This is hot. Tearing up the equipment. Okay. Okay. Nobody fed me breakfast this morning. Send us an email at hello at lovelessons.fm. And of course, if you want to remain anonymous, just say so. We'll be happy to do that for you. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Love Lessons Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.